Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara, if you haven't met me before. I'm doing a series on tectonic processes and hazards. We're going to be talking about hazard management theoretical cycles today. This is still part of inquiry question three. If you would like access to the notes that I'm using that I made myself to follow along to, I'll leave them in the description below. Feel free to just download them, edit them as you will. If you haven't subscribed, please do so down below. It really helps me out and it helps other people to find this channel too. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Hazard management theoretical models. We're gonna talk about two today. The first we're gonna talk about is the hazard management cycle. This is a process in which governments work together to protect people vulnerable to natural hazards that threaten their communities. The aim is to avoid loss of life and property, provide help to those affected, ensure a rapid and effective recovery. The hazard management cycle involves key players, governments at all levels, as well as international organisations, businesses and community groups are all involved in emergency planning. So there are four main stages of this hazard management cycle. There is mitigation, which is preventing a hazard, preventing hazard effects or minimising their effects. The focus of this is to identify potential natural hazards and taking steps to reduce their impact. The main aim is to reduce the loss of life and property, largely by helping communities to become less vulnerable. So how do they do this? They use zoning and land use planning. They develop and enforce building codes so that buildings are less likely to collapse. And they also build protective structures such as tsunami and sea defence walls. This needs to happen before a hazard event takes place, otherwise it is completely ineffective. The second stage of the hazard management cycle is preparedness, which is preparing to deal with a hazard event. The focus of this is to minimise loss of life and property and facilitating the response and recovery phases. Many activities are developed and implemented by emergency planners in both governments and aid organisations. How do they do this? They develop preparedness plans, they develop early warning systems, they create evacuation routes, they stockpile equipment and aid supplies, and they raise public awareness by holding earthquake drills, teaching children in school of how to do this. Again, this is another stage that happens before the hazard event, because otherwise it is completely useless. Stage three of the hazard management cycle, response. This is responding effectively to a hazard event. How do they do this? What's the aim of this? The aim is to cope with the disaster. The main aims are to save lives, protect property, make the affected areas safe and reduce economic losses. They do this through search and rescue efforts, through evacuating people when they need to be, through restoring critical infrastructure such as power and water supplies and ensuring that critical services continue such as medical care and law enforcement. This takes place during the hazard event. And finally the fourth stage of the hazard management cycle is recovery, getting back to normal. So there are two main focuses for this. There's the short term recovery which focuses on people's immediate need so it overlaps with the response phase a little bit. It has caused short-term activities, but it may last for a few weeks. Long-term recovery. This involves some of the same actions, but it may continue for months or even years. It includes taking steps to reduce vulnerability, which often overlaps with the mitigation phase, and the cycle continues. Actions. What can happen? Short-term actions, for example, restoring health and safety services, restoring permanent power and water supplies, re-establishing transportation routes, providing food and temporary shelter, organising financial assistance to help people rebuild their lives. And what about long term? So this involves rebuilding homes and other infrastructure, repairing and rebuilding more infrastructure and reopening businesses and schools. Again, this takes place after the hazard. This can't happen before. 
and as I said before the cycle then continues so a lot of the long term links back to mitigation which is why it's a cycle rather than stages. So the second model I'm going to talk about is the park model which is known as the hazard response curve. This shows how a country or region may respond after a hazard event. It can be used directly to compare how areas at different levels of development may recover from a hazard event. The impacts of hazard events change over time, depending on the size, the development of the areas affected and the amount of aid received. All hazard events have different impacts, so the curves are all different. Wealthier countries have very different curves than low income countries. This is because they are able to recover much faster. In hazard events that affect a number of countries, each country has its own curve. So I will insert a picture of this one here. So as you can see, there is the line of normality, the hazard event that makes the curve start, and then once it's back to the same level of normality, that is the recovery. But the time it takes to get there obviously depends on how prepared the country is and the response and the recovery aid, linking back to the hazard management cycle. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please let me know down below what you learn. Give it a like and subscribe. Turn the notification bell on so you don't miss an upload from me. And I will see you same time, same place next week, Monday, 4.30pm. Bye guys.